worshiping with us, church. Uh, we look forward to uh, continuing to worship. I'm going to ask you if you would to take your Bibles this morning and turn with me to the Gospel of John, uh, John chapter 5. And if you're using a pew Bible you need, it's page 1225 and 1226. Uh, we just got done singing Chain Breaker. Are you grateful that uh, Jesus Christ has broken the bonds of chains or the chains of I would have sin in our lives? Amen. Amen. Uh, he's made the difference because of what Christ did on the cross. And so the challenge today we're going to see here in this miracle of the Lord's in John chapter 5 is that we as a Christian need to somehow get out of the spiritual rut that we may find ourselves in and time to get back in the game a little bit. Uh, you know, you're a little, are you excited? You had the sun outside shining. You hear the robins. I, I was uh, walking a little bit this morning with the dogs, and I saw the robins everywhere, and you listen to them, and you have all of the excitement of spring. Those of you that are basketball uh, fans, you're right in the middle of March Madness. I don't know about you, but uh, right now I have maybe two teams left uh, after all that I've picked in the, in the polls for March Madness. Uh, the excitement even of basketball, our high school teams are playing. Uh, one of our local teams hit a three-point shot at the buzzer the other night to continue on in the state playoffs. It's just all types of things that we're kind of excited about with spring. And we enjoy that, and, and we enjoy perhaps getting back into that type of thing. But I think oftentimes as a Christian, there are their spiritual laws in our lives. And I don't know about you, but over the last year, uh, having been so cooped up as we have been, amen, uh, we've been cooped up so much that sometimes I, I, I believe we get ourselves into these spiritual ruts, so to speak. And sometimes because of everything that's going on, there's so much negativity, if you would, that we need to somehow figure out what is it now that I need to do to get out of the spiritual rut and get back in the game for Jesus Christ. I need to be excited about the things of God. I need to be excited about studying His Word. I need to be excited about being in church. I need to be excited about doing things for God. And we're going to take a look at some applications to what we see in this man's life here in John chapter 5 in just a few moments. If you have your text already there, look at verse 6. There's a very interesting question. Uh, at the end of verse 6, Jesus simply says, Do you want to be made well? Now, I'm not trying to be sacrilegious or anything, but, you know, sometimes, have you ever, have you ever heard the response or responded, well, that was a dumb question. Uh, you know, when we, we just had a young couple get married. We won't mention their names because it's online, but Pat and Larissa <laughs> had their, their marriage ceremony here just a few weeks ago. And I can just imagine when, when I got to the point where I said to Larissa, do you take this man? To be your wedded husband, and she looked at us very calmly and said, Why do you have anybody else? <laughs> that would kind of be the wrong question. Have you ever gotten a phone call in the middle of the night? You know, two o'clock, three o'clock, you know, somebody, one of those people, you know, or somebody calls you in the middle of the night or whatever it might be, and say, Well, did I wake you? Uh, no, it's three o'clock. I was just vacuuming the carpets. <laughs> kind of dumb questions every once in a while. Well, again, not to be sacrilegious, but this question seems kind of interesting. Uh, that the Lord Jesus would use it, and, and I'm taking a lighter look at that for us today, but you know, sometimes we, we have the questions that are things that go on in our life that we perhaps say, you know what, my life could be a little bit better for the Lord, or maybe I'm finding myself so sucked in recently that, that I need to understand a little bit more, I need to be doing something more for the Lord, I need to get back into the game and really begin doing what God has for me to do. And it would justify uh, they're looking forward to having a, a summer schedule of concerts, something that was gone all last year. You know, just the opportunity to be able to do things uh, as a believer. So I want to take a look at this text today and then make some applications along the life of, of this man and not only the questions that he was asked, but then certainly what Jesus does in response. So before we do that, let's ask the Lord's blessing. Father, take uh, our thoughts today and just focus them uh, in this passage and then focus them on you and the difference that you can make in our lives. Might we be challenged as believers and Father for those that are here or maybe watching online who have never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Might you challenge them as well from your word today. Uh, Father, we're asking for souls to be saved. We're asking for souls to believe on you uh, for eternal life. And I pray, Father, that this time together in your word would challenge us along that line as well as challenge us as believers uh, in our own lives every day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's take a look at this text. I'm going to ask if you would to follow as I would read. I'm just going to read the first nine verses 
of, of this particular event in the Lord's life, this miracle. Beginning in John chapter 5, verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, there was a pole, which is called in the Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. And in these lay a great multitude of sick people. They were blind, they were lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool, stirred up the water, and then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. That'd be kind of nice today, wouldn't it? Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity. How long? 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he says to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered, said, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, while he's getting ready to go in, another one steps in before me. Jesus says to him, here's a miracle, both physical and spiritual. Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made well. He took up his bed, and he walked. And that day was what? Sabbath. Sabbath. Now you should know that's going to cause a problem, is it not? Now here in John chapter 5, I'm going to just give you an overview of the text, and then we're going to uh, make some applications uh, with regards to how this man's life and his response and so on. But in this chapter, Jesus is revealing himself uh, as having authority and the power over all aspects of life, both physical and spiritual. But go down to verse 18 of John chapter 5. Let me just point out something to you here in John chapter 5, verse 18. Jesus says, and again, as we mentioned, the Jews sought all the more to kill him because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he also said that God was his father. Notice the last phrase, making himself what? Equal with God. Friends, that's because Jesus is God. All right, that needs to be understood. Jesus answers verse 19. Most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. Jesus is not only stating here, but he's reinforcing the fact that he is equal with God. He is equal with God, same in worship and obedience and service with God. Look down to verse 26. Now in verse 26, the Lord Jesus Christ again says, As the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. Jesus is here demonstrating his authority by healing a man who had been sick for 38 years. He's healing him on the Sabbath. He's doing all of these things, and both of these acts show his authority. They show the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ, not only over the physical world, but then certainly over the breaking of the Sabbath. He's showing his authority to determine what the rules of worship are. Can you bring this down just a little bit, please? I got a real bad echo up here this morning. Over and over again, if you read the book of John, Jesus is revealing to us who he is and the fact that he is whom? God. And that's very important to understand that. Now, once we've established that, I want you to take a look at this man for just a few moments uh, together this morning and see how he is like us and he is like all of mankind. If we look here in the first five verses that we already man read to you, again, we'll just remind you, this man was sick. Uh, he went through the same monotonous routine, uh, and, and the waters would be stirred. He was unable to get in there. The first thing I think you need to remember is this. This man is somewhat like us. Even as a Christian sometimes, we find ourselves chained to the past, the past life that we have. We find ourselves chained to what life was really like. Listen, my friends, the grace of God has saved you and made it possible for you to be saved for eternity, and he's changed your life. So don't live in the past. Amen. Don't live in the past. The past has been taken care of because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And we need to be grateful for that. And as a believer, now that we have that position in Christ and it's been secured, and we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, stop living in the past life, the past life of sin. Don't allow yourself to think that you, you no longer are what God wants. And here's the problem too many times with Christians, and I've seen this and talked to many over the course of this last year especially. Our Christianity, if you would, or our Christian life, it becomes, starts to become routine. 
It almost becomes monotonous. Why? Because we've been so sucked into things. And our prayer life, you know, perhaps if it, if it is existent, it's, it's, it's like the old rub-a-dub-dub, thanks for the grub. You know, it's just a short little prayers. It's just nothing that's really has any meat to it. There's no, we just become so tied into what's going on. When it comes to Bible study, uh, we kind of read over the passage. Right now, I'm involved in a group that is reading uh, through the Bible uh, through the course of the year. And, uh, you know, every once in a while, here in the early part, we, we start to get to all the readings of the generations, you know. And if you ever tried to read all of those uh, verbatim, it gets a little bit tough. And so you find yourself going, Abraham, blah, 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 blah. okay, I'm down to verse 34 already. And we kind of skip those things. And sometimes that's what happens in our normal reading. We just find ourselves reading over it. And, and, and instead of really examining the Bible, the Bible study becomes just mute. Same thing about church, church attendance. How easy is it, or how easy has it been, uh, sometimes to just go because it's the right thing to do, or maybe just not even bother about it. And sadly, I would say to you that over the past year, we have seen this attendance drop, not only in the church, obviously. Some of it, you know, it's okay. We understand some of the physical things. But you know what? People are getting used to sitting on their couches and uh, nodding off in the middle of a, of a live stream especially if it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, right in the middle of a football game, you know, what happens? You don't watch it. So many times we find ourselves getting into these things, and this is the concern that I have, and I believe that we're, we're, we're finding ourselves, and I, and I fight this even in my own self, even as a pastor, when I, I start to see things just start to become routine, the, the walk of our life just some, somehow just seems to be routine, and we don't start, we no longer see the people around us that, that need help. We no longer see the people that are hurting. We no longer share the gospel. We, we aren't expressing, as we talked about on Wednesday night, the goodness of God. We're not, we're not showing the goodness to others because we've been so locked into all of these things. What, what, is, what does Paul say in Ephesians chapter 2? We are his workmanship created in Christ to what? Good works. He's talking about the things that we do in our life. It's not talking about works for salvation. But he's talking about the evidence of what happens. And, and far too many times as Christians, I think right now, we have seen ourselves kind of get sucked in to this little, you know, group. And we show up on Sunday morning, and that's pretty much the end of our spiritual walk. You know, prayerfully, we're doing things on our own in the Word of God, but I, but I wonder, are we? Are, are we getting to the place where we're, we're, we're no longer having the passion for ministry? Go over to Romans, if you would, chapter 13. I apologize, I don't have the page numbers uh, from your the pew Bibles there, but just over a couple of books to Romans chapter 13. In Romans 13, Paul really challenges us uh, about what's happening right now and where we are. Um, I've had some conversations with a lot of folks who say, you know, do you think, do you think the Lord's return is nigh? And my answer to them is absolutely yes. It's close. We don't know for sure when the Lord's going to come back, but we are seeing so many things happen. I was up with uh, uh, Bill and uh, B.J. Rudge this week, and that was one of the things we were talking about, the end times and what we're seeing, the things that are happening uh, in our society. Notice it from Romans chapter 13. Do this, beginning in verse 11. Knowing the time that is now high time to awake out of what? Sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. Let us put on the armor of what? Light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness or lewdness and lust or strife and envy, but put on Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh or to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Listen, church, we need to wake up. We need to wake up and realize that we have a great responsibility. Kind of get rid of the cobweb, so to speak, and, and all the COVIDs, and, and get our passion back for serving God and doing what God has called us to do. I'm not negating the aspects of COVID. We all have friends who have passed as a result of this awful physical disease. We all have things that have affected us in many, many different ways. But we as Christians and as the church need to get back to doing what God has called us to do. And that involves us saying not only the scriptures and sharing the gospel of Christ, but we need to have a passion in ministry for reaching the lost for Jesus Christ. 
And you can't do that when you're shut up in your, in your little confinement at home or in our confinement of church on Sunday. And again, church, we're not here. This is not, this is not to beat us down. But I think far too many of us have gotten sucked into this little world right now. And we need to get out of it. Amen. We need to get out of it. Amen. Wear your mask. Do all of those things that you're supposed to do. Stand sick. Listen, I can share the gospel of Christ. I can share the gospel of Christ six inches away from somebody. I could still talk to them. I could still share with them the love of Christ. I could, if, if, if they have a need in their life and I want to get them something, I could take a basket of food and I could set it down over there and then I could share the gospel of Christ and why I love them and why God loves them. We have gotten so sucked into this and we are so sucked into this society right now and we are just, we, we are just overwhelmed about all of the negativity that's happened over the last year and as Christians, I'm afraid as a church, we have seen God just kind of be sucked into the, to, into the church in, in, in its little group and no longer is the passion there to share the gospel of Christ or the passion to serve God and the passion to be used of God in some way in this community. We need, we need to wake up and, and, and shake off those cobwebs, so to speak. You know, we got passions for sports. You know, we have passions for our kids' activities. They're still in school, and we get all excited about the things they're doing. And when a kid hits a three-pointer at the buzzer, we're all excited. We're all excited about it. We have all those passions in life, but are we have the passion to spend time in His Word or the passion to share the gospel of Jesus Christ? Is it at the same level? Is it at the same level? What about the unbeliever? In this particular passage with this man, he had no hope. And there are many, perhaps some here in our congregation today, those that may be listening online, they, they, they have no hope. This guy had no hope whatsoever. He couldn't get into the water. Every day, people around us are going and falling deeper into depression. There's no hope in this world in which we live. You turn on the television and it all is just negative, is it not? It's just absolutely negative. Almost every believer that I talk to, especially when I meet them at the gas pump, <laughs> see them at the gas station, boy, right away, oh, I can't believe what this administration has done. Look at the price of gas. But think about it in terms of all of this. Listen, and, and, and I'm, I'm not going to say this uh, to hurt because it does, it, 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 it's, it's, it's really sad. But people are taking their lives. Drug abuse in this valley is at a rampant pace because people have no hope. The hope that we have is found in Jesus Christ. And so now we have to have the passion to be able to share that with others that we come in contact with. Even those believers that are struggling. Take your Bibles and just go back a couple of chapters to John chapter 3 for just a moment. John chapter 3. You know, we live in a time right now, folks, when God is being rejected. The need for the preaching and the teaching of God's Word and for the understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ and what it means to believe on Jesus Christ for salvation, for eternity, is needed now even greater than at any other time, I believe. Amen. If you look here in John chapter 3, <clears throat> excuse me, verse 19, why is this happening? This is the condemnation that the light, Jesus Christ, has come into the world, but men love what? Darkness. Darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. Listen, friends, the love of sin and the darkness of sin is overwhelming at times. Don't be shocked by what's going on right now. Amen. Don't be shocked. Jesus Christ has come, but this world is rejecting Jesus Christ. They are rejecting God. They are in the darkness of their sin. They want nothing to do with the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have the light, do you not? Yes. All right, so if I have that light, I, I want to be able to penetrate the darkness. The Word of God is being... You, you go on Facebook, every one of you do. Almost every one of you. Maybe one person in here that I know that doesn't. And he just waved his hand back there. That's because he can't figure out. Barry can't figure out the internet. But anyway, listen, the word of God is being perverted in our pulpits. It's being perverted by men. 
And, and sometimes women in the pulpits, they, they're, they're scorning the true teaching of God's word. They're making people think that everything is just grand and glorious and we're all going to go to heaven and, and everything's going to be great one day. The scriptures don't teach that. The scriptures don't teach us that things are going to get better. Let's, let's not be shocked by what's going on right now. Don't be shocked by the corruptness in government. Don't be shocked by the decisions that are being made that are affecting this. Don't be shocked by the fact that we have a society, if you would, or more, more importantly, I guess it would be our government leaders that say, it doesn't matter. You can take the life of the unborn child. That is anti-biblical. It's against the teaching of God's word. Don't be surprised that it's there. And if you've been affected by that or if you had an abortion or whatever, our heart breaks for you. But that is not God's desire. And this country is not going to follow the teachings of God's word. So don't be, don't be alarmed by it. Amen. Don't be alarmed when somebody stands up to you and says, I don't believe in God. I probably wouldn't say it to them, but the devil believes. And they even shake. Listen, my friends. We have an opportunity right now to share the passion of Jesus Christ more than ever. Go back, if you would, to 2 Corinthians just a moment. I must uh, miss this passage, but I want to share it with you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning in verse 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy. Have you received the mercy of God in your life, believer? Absolutely. Notice what he says at the end of verse 1. We do not lose what? Heart. We don't lose our hope. We don't lose our encouragement. We don't lose our heart. Verse 2, we have announced or renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Friends, this happens every single day in, pul in pulpits around this community and around this world. The word of God is not being shared the way it should be. By manifestation of the truth, they're commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Just do what I think is right. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Notice verse 4. Whose minds the God of this age, Satan, has blinded. They do not believe, lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. We do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bond servants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Friends, if you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the light of Jesus Christ in you. And you should be that beacon on top of the hill that he talks about in the Gospels. I should be that shining light if you would. What about that passion? What about that desire to share? My friends, whether you're watching or you're here this morning, if you have never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are living in darkness. And I know that many of you have no hope. You have no hope. You think the world has given up on you. Well, it has. But Jesus Christ has not. Amen. Jesus Christ loves you. Amen. He died on the cross for you. The truth needs to be told. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the what? The way, the truth, and the life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to God himself but by me. Not by your good works. Not by all the things that you do. We need to be sharing that. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. If you would confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. <clears throat> Friends, listen. My hope is in Jesus Christ. Your hope is in Jesus Christ. Don't despair. Don't despair. You can complain all you want when you've got to spend $3.50 for gas. You can complain all you want when the grocery bills go up. Listen, my God will take care of us. I understand that Jesus Christ says, God says these things are going to happen. And so now I need to live. I need, I need to shake off what's been holding me back over the last year. And I need to get serious about sharing the gospel of Christ. And I need to be serious about letting my light so shine that the rest of the world sees it. And they say, man, I want to have that hope. I want that. Notice if you would quickly. Notice the challenge in verse 6. When Jesus says, will you be made whole to this man? The challenge is very simply to be revitalized, to be energized. You know, some of you might have to drink five-hour energy by the gallon. I don't know. But you need to be energized. 
You need to be revitalized for Jesus. Listen, as a believer, John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says, I came to give you life. And then the end of that verse, that you might have it more. Do you know what he says? Abundantly. Abundantly. Oh, he's not going to let you have all of the pleasures of life. And things. He says, oh, these are all. The they won't make you happy, my friends. But you can live that life abundantly for the Lord Jesus Christ. The psalmist says that I want to have my salvation, the joy of my salvation restored. I, I want my life to be so excited about being a Christian. I want God to be just so blessed as a result. Of it. Listen, uh, this is a great time of year to get refocused. It is. Okay, last year at this time, I sat up here on this, on this platform, on this pulpit, with a table in front of me. And after about maybe 10 different tapings, I had a 10-minute devotional on the communion and the blood and the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was awful. I sat there and I said, you know, God, you've got to use this, you've got to bless this, so on and so forth. It was, it, it was just very frustrating. Easter Sunday came. Where were we? Sitting at home. We came in early. Uh, Derek and, and Jamie helped me. And we, we came in early and, and we filmed the service. Do you know what? It just wasn't the same. This Easter, we're going to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ as a church family right here in this house. Amen. And I, I would just encourage all of us. Listen, if you're at home, friends, listen, listen. This, this is the time of year. You people, first of all, you need to take advantage of this time of year. You all have folks who are without hope. I was talking to some folks this week, you know, and, and just, just take the opportunity to invite them to come to church. Take the opportunity to get them into the house of God so that they can hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. It will be presented again on Easter Sunday morning. Share the gospel. Be excited about it. Friends, if, if you haven't been with us for this, this past year, let, let me just encourage you to get back into God's house, to get back into the fellowship of God's people. Take all the precautions you want, but being in the house of God makes a difference. It makes a difference being with God's people. The unbeliever in John chapter 10, verse 9, I would remind you, you know, this man, he, Jesus simply asked him the question, where do you want to be whole? Jesus says in John chapter 10, the shepherd passage, we call it, he says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be what? He will be saved. And he will go in and out and find green pasture. Green pasture. He's talking about the things that he will provide, the hope that he can give to us. But you know, God calls you to action. Look at verses 7, 8, and 9. We already read it. God calls this man to action. In verse 7, you'll notice he blames other people for his condition, doesn't he? You know, he, he blames himself a little bit, but he's blaming the other people. He says, nobody can come and help me get out of this water. He's been in that bed for 38 years. What does Jesus say in verse 8? Get up. Get up. Get back to what you're doing. Notice verse 9. Immediately he was made whole. Listen, my friends, if you're here without Jesus Christ and you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved today. Amen. Now is the accepted time of your salvation. Mm -hmm. Now is when that takes You don't have to get your life right. You don't have to have all the hope in the world. You don't have to have everything going perfect in your life. Christian friend, you don't have to have everything going right in your life to be used of God and so on. Now is the time when you can come back to Him, get restored, get rid of the cobwebs if you would, get back in the ball game as a believer in Jesus Christ and do the things that God has called us to do. Now is the time we do that. We share Jesus Christ. Find ways to be used of Him. This event is a, is a picture, if you would, of all, it's, it's just a picture of humanity. We're, we're, we're just kind of chained to the past. This man was chained to his past. He had no hope. Listen, friends, our hope, as the psalm says, is built on nothing less than what? Jesus' blood and righteousness. That's where my hope is. I don't trust, as that psalm continues to say, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean where? On Jesus' name. Listen, Christian friends, you and I, you know, we might get weak, we might be tired, we might be depressed. I, I know depression is a big thing in the believer's life today. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28, 29, Jesus says, Come to me, those of you that are burdened, you that are labored, you that are heavily pressed, and I will give you rest. I will give you strength. 
Shake off what's happened in your life. It begins in a spiritual way by coming to Jesus Christ and saying, Lord, I'm not where I need to be. I'm kind of sucked into this little life. Everything's kind of becoming routine. And I, I realize, Jesus, that you want to do something better for me. You want me to be more for you. And so I'm coming back to you. And 1 John 1, 9 says, if there's sin involved, I confess that and he forgives me. And then I go on and I'm used for Jesus Christ for his glory. Maybe you're just kind of, eh, you know, you know, you're just kind of struggling. Listen, get revitalized, get re-energized. Like this man, Jesus Christ can make the difference in your life. And as a Christian, might we get that passion and that desire to share Jesus Christ, especially right now. We have a beautiful opportunity to do that. You say, well, you can share that anytime. You're right. But let me tell you something. People understand Easter to be the time when Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. And it doesn't matter whether Satan is out there preaching the message that God is dead, that God doesn't exist. You know that he's the light of the world. And the world understands what resurrection is all about. They've heard about Jesus Christ. Use this time to get people, to invite people to share the gospel of Christ and be the light that he wants you to be. You can do all of that because you have the power of Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit in your life. Let him make a difference in our lives. Father, I pray that you would just encourage us and challenge us to have the passion and the energy to share Jesus Christ in this day. Father, I pray, I pray for that one person who's listening here today or even watching online that knows not, they have never believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, today, today might they do that. And Father, might we realize that as a believer, we have our strength and our confidence because of Jesus Christ. He makes a difference. And so, Father, in this coming and in this closing time together, might we focus on you? Might we focus on Jesus Christ and who He is? We thank you in His name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you if you would to close today. If you need the words, hymn number 112, it's probably very familiar to most of us. Uh, Jesus, name above all names. Now that's the name that we worship. Uh, Jesus Christ is the one that we give folks. Let's stand together and close our worship time together as we sing. something that it gets reignites the passion in your heart not only for those that are outside of Christ but certainly to be involved and be part of God's ministry in doing things for God that would show other people his love father I thank you for Jesus Christ and his presence in our life and I pray father that as we go from your house that you would encourage us that we would realize again Lord the passion that you had for the lost and might that same passion and desire uh, be in us and father might we take the gospel of Jesus Christ this week and share it with everyone we come in contact with. Father, open the doors. Open our eyes to be able to see those that are, that are without hope. Those that are depressed. Those that are struggling right now. Father, help us to be able to share with them the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Father God, we thank you. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He came to abolish the darkness of sin. And we thank you for that. And we pray that as we go from your house, you would indeed continue to minister to us and use us for your glory. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. 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 The Lord go with you and have a great week.